Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Aya. What happened to the White family after Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? For five entire seasons, we spent our time peering into the domestic life of a rather unassuming middle-class family as it went from manufactured bliss to utter chaos. It's actually very weird to know that the White family home was bought as a starter home by Walt and Skyler because they ended up spending their entire lives at the place. Well, most of their on-screen lives anyway. In season one, the White family couldn't have been more stereotypically strong if they tried to be. But by the time Breaking Bad had ended, the foundations of this once happy family unravel at the seams and are bombarded by the very man who claims to be doing everything for them. Hello, ma'am. We were called about a disturbance. It's more of a trespass. We know how Walter White's story ends, but what about his family? Well, that's exactly what we're going to try to answer in this video, so make sure that you watch until the very end. This is what happened to the White family after Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I'm ready to go. I'm taking the bus. The White family isn't exactly what Walt wanted for his life. Let's start this video by first clarifying that the life that we see Walter White leading in pilot is not the one that he had dreamed of having, or was even capable of having, really. Because it all starts with his ex, Gretchen Schwartz, in a way. Before Walt met Skyler, he used to date Gretchen, who was his lab assistant at Grey Matter Industries, the business that he had begun with his best friend Elliot. Walt and Gretchen had a very passionate relationship, but it ended up breaking down due to Walt's ego. While we wouldn't get to see it surface overtly, until he has his outburst on Gretchen. Walt has always despised rich people and that begun with her. He left her on the 4th of July weekend when he met her parents without saying a word because he was humbled by her wealth and not in that way that it drove him to make himself a better man. No, he just took up his business and moved elsewhere, buying himself out of gray matter and going to work at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. While working there, he met Skylar, who was a hostess at a restaurant near the lab itself. And after an extended courtship, the couple eventually got married. Skylar, unlike Gretchen, came from a modest background and was studying to become an accountant. There were going to be no ego issues here for Walter, he thought, and so when he went with her to buy what would eventually become the setting of most of Breaking Bad, he retains his youthful ambition. He called the house small and complained about many things that he had been unable to fix by the time the series begins because of the way his life plays out. Skylar was pregnant when they went to check this house out, you see, and it's heavily implied that Walt only got a teaching job because of the demands of a family. So while he does love his wife and his child, Walt Jr., very much, they simply aren't what he expected to get out of his life. And when you watch the pilot after getting all of this context, it will start making sense. Walt's daily routine, his decision to not tell his family about his cancer, and the way that Walt treats his own surprise birthday party. He has agency over one of those three things, and that is critical to understanding the role the White family plays in the context of that theme in Breaking Bad. Having said that, let's look at the White family itself. Hey. Veggie bacon. We're watching our cholesterol, I guess. Not me. I, I want real bacon. No, the White Family in the Beginning At the start of Breaking Bad, you can tell that the White Family is trying really hard to blend into the suburban lifestyle, but it is finding it increasingly difficult to keep things going. And the only person who seems to be aware of all of this is Walt, because it is through his eyes that we see the story. And in his eyes, his entire family is in a position that he never intended for them to be in in the first place. And more of that, he has allowed others to make decisions for him for so long that he doesn't even have control over his own family anymore. Walt is a genius with a Nobel Prize in his exercise room who gets emasculated by his brother-in-law at his own surprise party. And everyone, including his own son, seems to like him more than they like Walt. But the White family, when you take him out of the equation for a bit, are your typical struggling family putting on a facade of confidence. Walt Jr. has cerebral palsy and is 15 when the series starts, which means he needs assistance as a default setting with certain things. And though he loves his dad, going to school 
school with him every day and being called Junior all the time does nothing for his own personal development. It is clear that Walt also loves his son but views him more as a responsibility. Skylar White is your typical hustler who is obsessed with the idea of doing everything by the book. She used to be an accountant at Beneke Fabricators, but has since retired to become a rather thrifty housewife. She writes short stories and auctions off show pieces to make enough money so she can help her husband pitch in for unexpected baby that they are about to have. Oh, that's right, Skylar is also pregnant at the start of the series, and her pregnancy can be looked as a catalyst for Walt's criminal activities, because before that he was not inclined to work for himself to near death for Bogdan and his eyebrows, but now Skylar was running the ship so tightly that he didn't even have time to really take it in. So many people showed up for a surprise party because he was too busy apologizing to his wife for being late. So in the beginning, the White family is a middle-class family trying to live the upper-class life and really working hard to earn an honest living. Things might have stayed that way too if Walt hadn't caught Hank watching a DEA bust on TV and decide to become a meth kingpin to support his family. But that's for the next section. To all law enforcement entities, this is not an admission of guilt. I am speaking to my family now. How Walt Heisenberg's life started ruining his family. Once Walt's cancer diagnosis is confirmed, a significant change occurs in his attitude that spells the beginning of the end for the White family. He stops caring what others think that he should be doing. Now, don't get us wrong from a personal viewpoint. This is growth in that Walt is finally taking agency over his own life. But when you look at the bigger picture and see the way that he chose to take his agency, you realize that his family is like a ticking time bomb just waiting to explode. Once his disappearances and extended absences begin taking place, every member of the family is affected. Skylar is distressed that her husband is getting distant from her and might just be having an affair. Walt Jr. is so sick of his parents fighting that he takes on a new name, Flynn, and baby Holly is thankfully in the womb still, so she doesn't have to witness a lot of the initial disturbances in the White family thanks to Heisenberg. And once Skylar discovers Walt's new profession, the problem only worsens as she serves him divorce papers without even explaining things clearly to Junior. The White family becomes the definition of dysfunctional, and yet somehow their closest relatives, Hank and Marie, fail to notice exactly why things are unraveling the way that they are. Walt's cancer diagnosis, ironically enough, becomes the shield that he uses to justify everything to everyone, and while it works with Junior, Skylar remains unconvinced. I mean, Walt literally forced his way back into the White's house after separating from Skylar and refused to leave until things were resolved his way. We honestly don't blame Sky for having an affair with Ted Beneke, because how else could she have expressed her frustration with this entire situation Walt had put her in? The man claimed to be doing everything that he did for the good of the family, and yet his notoriety put them at a very high risk. The cousin stalking and marking the White House is a great example of why Skylar was right to be paranoid of Walt after she found out what he did for a living. But once that he showed her just how much money that there was in the meth business and explained that he really was doing it all to support his children's future, Skylar relented and even struck up a business partnership with her husband. She became his new money launderer, using her experience at Beneke Fabricators to convert Walt's drug money into clean, taxable cash that would eventually help their children get through college and live life unlike them. During this time, it appeared as though Walt and Skylar were getting along well and him and Junior were just off to the races as father and son. Junior even reverted to using his name once his father came home and Skylar had her own Heisenberg moments, with Bogdan and Ted respectively, but the good times didn't last for too long. Once Gus fired Walt and threatened his family, the timer of the implosion of the White family sped up rapidly. Walt's increasingly erratic and arrogant behavior put Skylar on edge to the point she willingly gave custody of her children to Hank and Marie so that they would be protected from the man who protects his family. After Walt defeats Gus and tells Sky that he won, she is visibly horrified by the lengths to which he went because the explosion was broadcasting live on the news and she could see what he really meant by that statement. From that point onward, she was terrified of her own husband and did everything that he asked of her, not just out of loyalty to her marriage and her children, but also out of fear. What really broke the family apart was Walt getting Hank killed. Of course, he did not do it himself. He didn't even know Jesse was with Hank at the time, but he called Jack and Jack killed Hank. 
so Walt is responsible for Hank's death, to say the least. Right after the shootout occurs, Walt rushes back home with his barrel of money and tries to get his family to leave with him, but by this point, Skyler has just told Junior what his father really does to earn money, and they are both finally done with him. Walt turns on the Heisenberg mode to try to intimidate his wife to agree with him, but after his own son pushes him off and protects his mother, like a cub protecting its injured lioness mother, Walt flees the White House with Holly and realizes that there is nothing that he can do for them anymore. Not the way he wanted to anyways. So he calls Skylar and gives her an alibi to keep her safe from police and prosecution. He returns Holly via fire station shenanigans and went on the run thanks to Ed the Disappearer, who set him up with a fake identity and a secluded cabin in New Hampshire. After this, the only thing that we hear about the former White family is that they moved into an apartment that is not so great and Skye is working as a taxi dispatcher just to make ends meet. And the only reason we hear about even this is because Walt is desperate for conversation and Ed is the only one that he can talk to. But this isn't the last that we hear about the White family. That would come in the season finale of Breaking Bad back in 2015 and even as recently as the penultimate episode of Better Call Saul. What happened to the White family after Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? After relocating to New Hampshire, Walt tries to reconcile with his family one last time by sending them some money to help them get out of their frankly destitute living conditions. He calls Junior, who has now permanently reverted to calling himself Flynn, at his school to tell him that he is sending $100,000 to his best friend Lewis's house so that they can use it to make their lives better. An emotional Walt desperately tries convincing his son that he didn't kill Hank and that all he did, he did for his family. But by this point, Flynn sees his father for who he really is. He threatens to expose Walt's call to everyone who will listen to him and warns him to never contact his family ever again. When Walt shows up in Albuquerque looking to tie up loose ends, he decides to finally do something that will actually help his family get out of the situation that he has put them in. He first visits Gretchen and Elliot Schwartz at their lavish new home and intimidates them into accepting money that he has brought with him. Walt's plan is to use Gretchen and Elliot's PR cleanup campaign to his leverage and get them to create an irrevocable trust fund for his children so his own money can reach them through someone they genuinely know and trust. This act not only parallels the offer that Elliot made to Walt when he visited him for his birthday party, it also shows you just how much he has changed. Earlier, when Gretchen and Elliot revealed his secret to Skylar that they had actually refused to take their help for his treatment, Walt was forced to admit wrongdoing and come up with his excuse to explain all of it. This time, there would be none of that. Gretchen and Elliot would either keep their word and pretend to do it out of the kindness of their hearts, or they would be killed by the two best hitmen west of the Mississippi. It was as simple as that. After ensuring that his family would receive said money when Junior turned 18, Walt visited Skylar at her apartment one last time and came clean about why he did what he did. He finally told her that he did it because he liked it and he was good at it. He did it because it made him feel alive and there is nothing that he can do to undo the damage that he has already done, but maybe he can help with damage control. Walt gives Skylar a lottery ticket with the coordinates of Hank and Steve Gomez's dead bodies. After he disappeared, Skye was being harangued by law enforcement to divulge everything that she knew about his operation, and they were relentless. All I have to give you. Walt knew that this information could help Skye cut a plea deal and get her out of the legal quagmire he left in his wake. And for this, Skyler allows him to hold Holly one last time and get a final glance at Junior returning home from school before he goes and takes care of his business. After Walt and the neo-Nazis are found dead at Jack Welker's compound, a wild goose chase begins for every known associate of Heisenberg who hasn't already been picked up or killed. And this is where we learn what happened to the White family. In Better Call Saul, Season 6, Episode 12, Francesca calls Jean on the day he asked her to and reveals that police tales follow her till this day. He scoffs at Skylar White because she was able to get the plea deal Walt arranged for her and regain some measure of normalcy in her life. This revelation, coupled with the fact that Junior is 17 at the end of Breaking Bad, makes it more than likely that after the series concluded, Skylar receives that trust fund money from Elliot and Gretchen Schwartz a year later, and she most likely used it to do exactly what Walt said he was earning the money to do and take care of her family. It is unlikely that Gretchen and Elliot revealed the source of the money to her. They were too scared of 
of Walt by now, even after his death, they still thought that they were being watched by professional hitman. So in the end, the White family got the conclusion that their patriarch wanted for them. They became rich enough to see themselves through their lifetime without worrying about literally anything. But the cost that they paid to get to that point was way too high. Marvelous Verdict we have seen a lot of family dramas, sitcoms, comedies, thrillers, etc. in our lifetime, but no one does a little bit of everything quite as perfectly as the White family. Their moments of brevity capture the exact kind of bliss that domestic life should be all about, but their tense moments are just as extreme with meth, blood, and tears littered in the middle of all of this. If Breaking Bad is the tale of trading in one's soul to pursue their passion to the fullest, then the White family is the price he ended up paying. And no matter how many millions, that he throws at them to make up for it, nothing can change that. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Stop it. Stop, stop it. I don't want anything from you. I don't give a shit. You.